Hello, and welcome to our pre-lab activity associated with the circulatory system. Now, this is the first of our lectures where we're based, or pre-labs, where we're going to be looking at, in essence, organ systems. And so we've talked about uh, the various tissue types that are going to be present within the body. Now, as we start to look at organs and organ systems, we're going to be putting together these different tissues in order to form structural units within the body. And so what we're going to be looking at are uh, kind of assemblages or things that are built, in essence, with a variety of tissues. And they're going to be there to give the structure and functions that's necessary for that organ. Okay, so if we take a look at a blood vessel, what we're going to be looking at, again, we've got a circular profile here uh, of a muscular artery. And so we've got the, the lumen here filled with red blood cells, occasional a white blood cell uh, being present. And then we've got the wall structure here of the blood vessel itself. And this is going to be a classic example of a wall structure of a cardiovascular system vessel. And what we're going to see is that the wall structure is going to be organized into three distinct layers or three distinct tunics. So what we're going to have is lining this space, essentially the lumen, the space where we're going to have the blood vessels passing through, we're going to have the tunica intima the layer that's kind of intimately associated with the blood um, that's passing through this structure. So the tunica intima, the innermost layer, uh, is going to be lined by an endothelium. And so that endothelium is going to be a simple squamous epithelium. So one cell layer thick, and the cells are going to be very flat to give a nice smooth surface to the epithelial lining, a nice smooth surface to the inner region of this vessel, so that the blood cells are able to flow through it relatively easily. Underlying that endothelium is going to be a subendothelial uh, loose connective tissue. And so this is going to be like the lamina propria we've seen in other regions of the body. And that's going to be a good uh, for anchoring our endothelium as well as uh, supporting it. So that's going to be the tunica intima. Deeper to the th tunica intima is going to be a layer of, uh, uh, layer of smooth muscle referred to as the tunica media. Uh, and in the tunica media, again, lots and lots of smooth muscle so that the blood vessel can expand as blood is forced through it, or it can recoil without damage uh, as the blood pressure is, or blood volume is reduced, or it can actually constrict down and regulate the flow of, of blood through this vessel. So the smooth muscle is going to be organized circumferentially. So when we take a look at this, we're basically going to be looking at longitudinal profiles of these smooth muscle cells as they're wrapped kind of around the circumference of this blood vessel. Outside of the tunica media, the smooth muscle layer, is going to be the tunica adventitia. And this is going to be a dense, irregular connective tissue. Lots of type 1 collagen, some elastic fibers are going to be present here. And it's going to be this tunica adventitia, which anchors the blood vessel into the surrounding tissues. Now, as we look at the different categories of blood vessels, we're going to see different amounts of tunica media and tunica adventitia being present. The tunica intima, that innermost layer, uh, essentially the simple squamous epithelium, is always going to pre be present, regardless of the blood vessel or the, the size that we're looking at. So we're going to start, in essence, at the heart and then move out into uh, the periphery. And so the first blood vessel is going to be the elastic arteries. These are going to be the aorta or branches of the aorta. And so over here, we've got the lumen. This is the space where the blood would be flowing through. We've got a tunica intima. Very, very thick tunica media, lots and lots of smooth muscle, lots of elastic fibers are going to be present here. And then a relatively thin uh, tunica adventitia over here at this point. And again, this is important, lots and lots of media, lots of smooth muscle, lots of elastic fibers, because the aorta is going to be receiving a large volume of very high pressure blood coming from the heart. So it needs to be able to expand when the heart is contracting and then recoil as the heart is relaxing and still have enough kind of oomph and enough uh, recoil and pressure to push the blood through the rest of the body so that we have this constant flow of blood through the body whether the heart is contracting or relaxing and refilling. Now the elastic arteries again the overall overall characteristic is many many layers of these smooth muscle cells and elastic fibers within the tunica media and that's going to be good for dealing with the high pressure and high volume fluctuating pressure uh, of the materials, the blood that's passing through them when the heart is contracting and recoiling. Now, the blood is going to be distributed very rapidly through the body through a series of muscular arteries. And so these are the named anatomical arteries as well as arteries that are going to go into different regions of the organs. And so the characteristics of the muscular arteries, uh, again, are going to be 
Uh, we've got an inter tunica antima, tunica media, tunica adventitia to the outside. Still lots of elastic fibers being present, so you might be able to see an internal elastic lamina or an external elastic lamina uh, at the inner boundary between the tunica intima and the tunica media or the uh, external elastic lamina between the tunica media and the adventitia. Now, many times the muscular arteries are going to be characterized by a kind of a scalloped appearance of the lumen because they're going to collapse down a little bit uh, when we take a look at them in histological specimen. Uh, the other identifying characteristic of muscular artery is we're going to have a very prominent tunica media. And in general, the tunica media is going to be about the same size or a little bit thicker than the tunica adventitia. We go down into arterioles. What we're going to be looking at are going to be very small blood vessels that are essentially still on the artery end of it. But they're going to be important for distributing blood to capillary beds. And most importantly, because the majority of the wall is going to be the tunica media, uh, one or two layers of smooth muscle cells within the wall. It's going to be these arterioles that constrict down and regulate the blood flow into the capillaries. And so, in essence, what they're going to be doing is constricting down to decrease the pressure, decrease the blood flow, so we don't blow out the capillaries with a lot of blood, a lot of pressure going through what would be very, very thin walled structures. Now, within the capillary bed, essentially what we're looking at is going to be the exchange region. So we want to minimize the distance between the bloodstream what's being carried by the blood and the surrounding tissues. And so what's going to happen is we're not going to have a tunica adventitia. We're not going to have a tunica media. The only thing we're going to have are essentially simple tubes of those endothelial cells. So simple squamous epithelium so that they're going to, in essence, minimize the distance between the inside and the outside of the blood vessels to allow for diffusion to occur. Now, once it's, the blood is passed through the capillary beds, it's going to run into a venule system, a vein system, and that's going to return the blood to the heart. And so where we would have an arterial over here, I'll label two on this slide. Uh, again, you can see the simple squamous epithelium cells, the endothelium to the inside, maybe two, maybe three layers of uh, smooth muscle cell over here. Over here at one, we're going to have a venule. And in most cases, the arterioles and venules, arteries and veins are going to run in close proximity to one another. The venules are going to have a much thinner wall structure, at most a media of one or maybe two layers thick, and a relatively prominent adventitia. But it's going to start out with this uh, kind of very uh, thin walled structure. Uh, it's going to have a larger diameter lumen uh, because it's going to be involved with storage and return of the blood. Uh, and so you're going to have a much uh, wider lumen, much thinner wall structure than we'd have with the associated arterial or the associated artery structure. And so the venules will often appear kind of collapsed down uh, when you see them in sections. Again, we take a look at this as a larger vein. So we see a very large diameter to the lumen, lots of red blood cells still packing within it, but a relatively thin wall in relationship to the lumen diameter maybe a couple layers of, of tunica media, and then the adventitia around the outside. Very, very elastic because these vessels are going to be able to expand as they're storing the blood. We take a look at lower veins, essentially veins below the level of the heart. We may have some smooth muscle cells in the adventitia that are arranged longitudinally along the length of this vessel because they're going to be there for supporting it because we've got a lot of blood that's present in the vessel. Uh, not a lot of wall structure associated with it, so there's going to be a tendency for it to kind of uh, essentially fill with the blood and expand outward, and that could collapse down uh, and cause things like varicose veins. Uh, the other thing, uh, before we go on to the next thing, veins may have valves that will be present, uh, but you need to be able to see it really in a longitudinal section to be able to see the veins uh, within the valves. Uh, the final type of uh, vessels within the circulatory system before we move into the heart are going to be the lymphatic vessels. And the lymphatic vessels are going to drain uh, the excess tissue fluid, cellular debris, and lymph lymphocytes uh, from the periphery. And so it's going to be a one direction system, relatively thin walled structure, but lots of valves are going to be present. And these wall structure is going to be more disorganized than what we would see with the valves. Uh, the other thing is that lymphatic vessels are either going to have nothing within their lumen or uh, white blood cells, nucleated cells, where a vein, if you see cells within it, are going to be primarily red blood cells. Uh, 
white blood cells, nucleated cells within the bloodstream are going to be very, very rare uh, under most circumstances. So if you see lots of nucleated cells, no red blood cells, think lymphatic. You see red blood cells under almost all circumstances, what you're going to be looking at is going to be a cardiovascular system vessel. And if you're thinking about it, it's probably going to be a vein. Okay, and that finishes up uh, our overview of the circulatory system, uh, the lab preview. Uh, again, as always, if you have any questions, feel free to email me at hoffmanj at rta.edu. Thanks.